Rusty Hazelden here, and welcome to The Art of Renderman, Volume 1. In this video, we're going to unlock the secrets of Pixar's Renderman by creating an animation in Maya with photorealistic materials and dramatic lighting. To get the most out of this video, make sure to download the project files linked in the description and give this tutorial a go. For over 30 years, Renderman has been used in the film industry to render movies featuring groundbreaking visual effects and animation. In this project, we're going to take a shot from start to finish and look at all the steps required to produce a final animation using Renderman for Maya. Essential topics include adjusting Pixar's surface material attributes to create the look of plastic, wood, and metal, applying texture maps to add more detail to surfaces, aging a shiny metal surface by adding a layer of tarnish, and using the Renderman IPR to interactively develop materials and lighting in real time. Learn a wide range of lighting techniques that can be used to create a dramatic nighttime scene. Discover how to enhance the realism of a shot by enabling depth of field and motion blur. Advanced topics include using a light filter and light linking to control scene illumination, sharing 2D texture placement nodes to make shading networks simpler to maintain, fine-tuning the render settings, using the RenderMan denoiser to cut down on render time, and batch rendering the final animation. Well, there's a lot to cover, so let's get started. To follow along with the work light tutorial, you'll need to download the project files which are linked in the description. When you start working on a project in Maya, the first thing you need to do is tell Maya where the project files are located on your hard drive. The set project command is used to define the directory where the scene files, models, and textures are stored. From the file menu, select set project. Open the Art of Renderman Volume 1 Project Files folder and click set. Let's take a look at the starting scene for the work light project. From the file menu, select open scene. In the scenes folder, select chapter 1 and click open. The work light scene consists of several objects. Let's click the play button and watch the animation. The camera moves in closer on the work light and a bent nail falls down and settles on the ground. There are also nails scattered around the work light and some of them are resting on the cord. Click the stop button, then reset the current time to frame zero. The RenderMan shelf is used to launch renders, add lights and create materials. Let's start by adding a dome light. Click on the sun icon. By default, the dome light creates illumination throughout the scene that simulates an overcast day. Switch to the transform node and type minus 10 in the translate Y field. This won't change the lighting in the scene, but it makes the viewport less cluttered by moving the dome light locator below the floor. Now that we have a light in the scene, let's start up the viewport render by clicking the letter R. At this point, all of the objects are gray and soft shadows are provided by the dome light. The viewport render mode updates continuously and produces a cleaner image over time. Let's jump to the last frame of the animation in the time slider. The viewport render will update automatically. Let's set the current time back to frame zero. Let's switch to the shape node and adjust several dome light properties. The dome light supports image-based lighting using a panoramic HDR image. In this mode, the lighting in the scene will be more realistic and it provides environmental reflections that will show up on metal materials. Click the folder icon next to color map. Then click on the source images folder and select environment.tex and click open. RenderMan supports texture maps in several common formats, including ping, TIFF, and EXR. When these kinds of images are loaded in RenderMan, they are converted automatically into an internal file format called .tex files. The conversion process happens in the background when you start a new render. In this tutorial, all of the textures have already been converted into the .tex format and are ready to go. With the environment texture loaded, the scene now has more realistic lighting and the shadows are more detailed. Let's turn off the primary visibility checkbox so the environment won't be visible in the background of our renders. 
We are also going to turn off the dome light visibility in the viewport by expanding the Object Display Drawing Override section. Turn on the Enable Overrides checkbox and then uncheck Texturing. Click the R icon to stop the viewport render. RenderMan comes with a custom render view called Image Tool, or IT. The Image Tool works well on large monitors, but it can be challenging using it on a small screen. Let's change a few preferences using the RenderMan Preferences menu. To direct the renderings into the Maya Render View, switch the Render 2 setting from Pixar IT to Maya Render View. We're going to render the final animation using the RenderMan Local Queue with RIB files, so change the spool style to RIB and set the frames per server to 1. Make sure the Launch Denoiser checkbox is enabled so the Denoiser feature works. Click the Save button to close the window. Now, when we click on the clapboard icon with the R logo, the render will appear directly in the render view. We're rendering using a test resolution of 50%. This means the images we create will be at 50% of the final render resolution. If you want even faster test renders, simply go to the Options menu and select a lower test resolution like 25%. The test resolution setting only affects images created in the render view. Full resolution renders will still be produced when running batch render jobs. Click the one-to-one -one icon to view the image at its native resolution. Well, this is starting to look pretty good. Let's take a break at this point, and in the next video, we're going to come back and create materials for the work light. Well, let me know if you like this video. And be sure to subscribe and hit the bell, so you don't miss the next tutorial. If you have any questions or suggestions, post them down below in the comments and I'll take a look. I'm Rusty Hazelden and thanks for watching.